Hello, this is Dr. Ford Brewer with Heart Attack, Stroke, and Cancer Prevention. Uh, today we're going to talk about the next level of antiplatelet therapy, the NOAX, Warfarin, uh, Plavix. We'll, we'll describe what they mean in a few minutes ago. But what, what was the first level? Uh, aspirin. We've had a couple of videos on aspirin. Remember, it uh, has we can measure aspirin effectiveness by thromboxane or thromboxane derivatives in the urine. <clears throat> Why all this focus on um, platelets and clotting? <clears throat> well, let's go back and look at, the, um, look at the basics in the progression again real quick. Here you have a normal artery. You're laying down plaque. As you get more and more plaque in there, some of it starts to get inflamed. If it does, it may spew out into the bloodstream. If it does, it forms a clot. It's not the plaque that causes the heart attack. It's the clot. So, if you start thinking about, about that, it becomes clearer and clearer why clot management or clot prevention is important. Remember, <clears throat> the vast majority of arteries have good blood, fl blood flow uh, right before an event, even in the area where the event was. Uh, this artery uh, came from a patient that died of a heart attack. And as you can see, it, uh, at that point in time, that patient would have had a normal stress test. This is plaque, but it had not covered half or more of the uh, flow area or the lumen. Now this is a concern because it's an area where the immune system is attacked and caused inflammation. And that's exactly what happened. It breaks out and then forms a clot. So again, as we begin to review this, we begin to see why clotting is so important. <clears throat> this is a, a similar picture, a uh, larger artery, uh, not microscopic, uh, plaque in this artery wall, but again, a good area for flow for blood. What happened with this patient was they had a hot area right here. That's not inflamed plaque that you're seeing right now. That's the clot. This is the intima or uh, endothelium, or some people call it in the Baildenine community call it the tennis court. As you see, it had cracks. The inflamed uh, plaque touched the blood, caused the clot, the clot went down, killed the patient. Microscopically, what's going on? Uh, again, we've had some images there to help understand what's going on. Um, this is the endothelium. This is um, an area with uh, the muscular layer. Again, it's not a not that good. We we don't have the uh, diagram of the inflamed plaque. But what's going on here is. Once you disrupt that covering, you have chemicals that stimulate uh, platelet aggregation. Platelets that normally flow around in the blood get stimulated to start linking together, and that is the formation of the clot. And as you remember from talking about aspirin in this area, um, a lot of that is prostaglandin-related. Remember, prostaglandins were discovered first in the prostate, but they're found to be made by almost all tissues. Uh, th these prostaglandins have, uh, a lot of prostaglandins have vascular impacts. These prostaglandins uh, help cause the um, uh, platelets to aggregate. So, now we begin to understand why clotting is so important. If you can prevent or slow down that clotting, then you should be able to slow down or prevent a heart attack and stroke. And sure enough, the literature of the science is crystal clear that we do that. So, what's the problem? Well, aspirin has caused bleeds. And, you know, it's like, uh, again, I keep referring back to baby boomers that remember Rosanna, Rosanna, Dana. It's always something. And maybe even a, a more... Uh, appropriate statement for this is every solution creates a whole new set of problems and there are problems with bleeding there are problems with aspirin maybe not being the right mechanism or enough clot management so we've gotten into a bunch of other um, 
mechanisms for doing this. One of the first one was warfarin or coumadin. It's been around for years. Um, Coumadin solved a lot of problems. Uh, it was able to decrease clotting when uh, aspirin was not right. But uh, Coumadin or Warfarin was, it's also called, uh, it's used as a rat poison. It's uh, got a lot of side effects. You have to do what's called INH or uh, bleeding uh, measurement tests almost every day. They've come up with new types of um, medications. They're called NOACs, Novel Oral Anticoagulants. And as you see, they have a lot of advantages over warfarin. Uh, some disadvantages still, they're, uh, they're way more expensive. They don't require uh, advantages. They don't require some of the uh, routine testing. They don't have as much um, side effects with other drugs or foods such as vitamin K. Um, so there are a lot of advantages. The biggest one we haven't mentioned yet, uh, some of the new uh, oral anticoagulants, you could argue, and many people would debate, that they're maybe even safer than aspirin. Now, again, I'm not going to get into that debate. I'm just going to make you aware that that debate is there. So what are they? And um, Pardon me, I thought I could get some good... Uh, view here. Xarelto, you've probably heard of, and Eliquis. A um, couple of the new oral anticoagulants, or novel oral anticoagulants. Now, uh, what's the current situation with them? Uh, most of us in medicine, and there's been clear standards research out there to look at it, less than a third of the people that, are, that need these medicines are on them. Less than a third. Now, why is that? Well, it's really easy, and when I first got into this uh, role, it, uh, my, I would go over this with patients. It's one of the more common findings I would see, a patient with atrial fib and uh, often not even taking aspirin, let alone not taking uh, one of the NOACs. And uh, they would say, well, the, the doctor never really covered it with me, or the doctor didn't, didn't think it was necessary. Um, I can tell you, doctors get maligned a lot, uh, and quite often we deserve it. Um, cardiologists and internists and others are very busy, and we're people too. However, uh, I can tell you that patients are very reticent to take these medicines as well as others. I have major challenges getting people to take statins, let alone uh, the NOACs the oral anticoagulants. So I don't think it's all the doctor's fault. I think the patients are very reticent as well. Um, there have been multiple ways of trying to help doctors and patients recognize the risk-benefit equation here, because that's what it's all about, risk-benefit. There's been a, uh, there's a formula called CHAD. Uh, it has to do with um, predicting, with benefit risk for NOACs. And then they developed it further for CHAD2, VA, uh, CHAD2, VASC, and then CHAD2, VASC2 for further and further developments. The trend has always been uh, further increases in recommendations. Now, why is that? Number one, we're finding more and more risk uh, that we really didn't know existed, especially with atrial fib and stroke. I'll do a, a separate video on that. Number two, like I said earlier, you could make a debate that some of the newer oral anticoagulants are very safe and maybe even safer than aspirin. Thank you. Oh, one other thing. Uh, speaking of debates, there's also a debate about uh, dual antiplatelet therapy. And again, I'm not going to get into that. I think that uh, probably is a topic for another video.